Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about standing out. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hey buddy, I have been enjoying your videos, thank you. Well, I'm glad that you have. Here is a que here's a question open for interpretation. How does a developer separate himself from the pack? Well, if you stand in, in a pack of wolves, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. But I'm assuming we're talking about a human pack here of other software developers. Uh, it's going to depend on the context. And see, the problem, as you're saying, is that this is very much open for interpretation. So are you going to stand out on the... Uh, at what level and in what context are you going to stand out? Are you going to stand out on the CV? Are you going to stand out in your team? Are you going to stand out to your boss, your manager? Like, are you going to stand out, you know, in the community or on YouTube or wherever you're going to stand out, right? So I'm just going to make some assumption and guess that you want to stand out and look good uh, within your team and company, which is like 99% of what all software developers who ask this question wants, uh, because most of us are just trying to do, you know, get to terms with that sensation of uh, incompleteness we got we have because mom and dad didn't hug us enough, so we want to impress our coworkers and uh, and our boss instead. So the way you do that, uh, it varies a little bit from company to company, but I'll give you the like the common things that you should focus on, which is going to, well, it depends on the coworker and the boss and so forth. But guys, like uh, if you do this right, it can almost get a little bit obnoxious how much people depend on you or like how quick you find yourself. Like it's almost erotic in some cases. I'll tell you a story uh, that actually happened the other day. So, one of our product owners at uh, at, a, at a gig I had was uh, she was leaving the company, and her replacement, uh, which at, I never met this person ever. I don't even work in their department. Uh, he just r like rogue invited me to a one-on-one -on -one catch-up meeting. I've never met this person. I don't. I, there's no agenda. Yeah, it's just I, honestly, I was kind of s wondering if I should take that meeting or not, but I did. And he basically expl I tried to kind of figure out why, why am I here, and it turns out that she had written him a short list of people that he has to meet and get in good with, so that he can, you know, so he can make headway on his projects. And I was apparently on that list. So he was just checking in, making sure that he, I knew who he was, and checked if it was okay if he rogue invites me to, you know, whatever meeting he might have. And I explained very ni kindly to him that, yeah, sure, if I can help, I will help, but we're not even in the same department. I, and I have my own team. Like, I ha literally am, um, like, running another team, and he wants me to help his team, you know, kind of off the books. <laughs> due to the fact that apparently I had made an impression or something like that on his uh, on the person who had the job before him. <laughs> so that was very fun. And you see, that sort of like air or I don't know, notoriety or like um, word of mouth type of reputation, uh, you get that usually in the most, in the, uh, this is how it, you, uh, the most common way at the very least, by having fairly strong t tech skills, you need to be, you know, have a reputation or be able to consistently produce good results. You need to have fairly strong domain knowledge. That's also, I would even go as far as to say, depending on the context, it's actually more important to have domain knowledge than to have tech skills. It really depends on, like the, as I said, like if you have strong tech skills and strong domain knowledge, all the developers will love your, they will want your flesh, because that's what they need. Domain knowledge is usually the thing that your product owner and your managers and like all that stuff, they like, that's what they really, really want. And then the last thing to have is a business mindset. That's what your top-notch CTO character, CEO characters and so forth want that you want you to have. They're never going to want your flesh, uh, unfortunately, because you weigh, you, you're 
you're like dirt working like three or four people under them uh, similar things like that so they're never going to notice you but they want you to have a business mindset uh, and of course the business mindset is also very relevant uh, when you're dealing with other PO's so people who basically want you to take charge your direct manager wants you to have a business mindset as well because tech skills and domain knowledge is really useful but business mindset is the thing that really is puts the, the sherry on the cake that's what you're looking for and so basically what I say is that uh, yeah, I'm saying is that you should try your best to get to a point where first and foremost you need to be a, sol a very solid software developer because honestly guys the average software developer is I mean they're good but they're not great that simple uh, people a lot of people can do the job but very few s software developers are truly outstanding the, like the people who tr are almost at the, a trendsetter level within I mean they don't have to be at that an international level but they if you if you have really strong tech skills and you can kind of you do well with architecture and uh, teach other people tech and stuff like that or like show people how to do things in a sustainable way uh, everybody is gonna love that about you that's a that's a big 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 plus for the engineer side of your career and the other part is to have the answer to all questions you have no idea how many questions there are out there and in special especially in the corporate world like it's insane you will be surprised at how quickly you will be pulled in as i said like you will be pulled in by anyone to any meeting if you have these two things if you can answer all the questions and you have the tech skills to back it up uh, there is no one in it who's not going to want your flesh and then as i said the business mindset factors in because most of the people are who are in it almost acts like as as, as the bridge component between the other parts of you because if you have the ability to answer all the questions and you can produce stable solutions, you will find, and you know, you have that bit, that sense of business where you can come with ideas and so forth, you will very quickly realize that, uh, yeah, uh, everybody is desperate to have you as their personal developer. So what I want you to take away from this is that standing out from the pack is usually down to a few things uh, first and foremost having strong tech skills is going to make you stand out uh, amongst your peers have and having a lot of domain knowledge is going to make them love you because most uh, of the time you're just trying to figure out how all the things fit together and in a normal software developer's life there are so many things that are undocumented that you need to know and nobody knows it except that guy who sits over there who knows everything for some reason and they you know nobody's really clever enough to figure out that he should probably write some shit down for everybody else but it's nice if you are that guy and then also a business mindset business mindset that basically means that you have the ability to understand what the company wants if like you to realize that there are certain key things that every PO wants every product developer wants every designer wants every company is trying to do because it's either it's a trend or because they're gonna earn money from it stuff like that if you know these it's kind of the I, I like to call it the motion of the ocean like you know how things are moving before they even happen then you can basically just say the right right thing at the right moment and people kind of go yeah we should do that like it's the thing that's going to make people believe like you, that's the thing that's going to make you heard that's the thing that's going to make you like own every business meeting because you know already most people are trying as i said guys a lot of the people in it are trying to hide the fact that they don't really know a lot of stuff like uh, they're sort of informed and if you have strong tech skills you have strong domain knowledge and you can like and you sort of know what they're all after uh, you own the world I swear that you do it's insane and I promise you guys there are software developers who are paid an average wage work as just another developer but for some reason the higher ups never make a decision without having that person in the same room and whenever there's a planning meeting or anything like that that person is always consulted first it's almost uh, scary how uh, significant the opinion of a single software developer can become if he plays he or she plays uh, uh, plays the uh, plays the game correctly have a great day